I'm Sam Crosby and I'm a nature educator here at Centennial Park. I think imagination is everything in play. It engages the physical body as well as the mind and develops those sort of cognitive thinking patterns that we want kids to have to think creatively, to solve problems, to basically think for themselves. So use their mind to think what are the possibilities and how do I get there. Um, role playing and uh, those sorts of games are really good because they provide a testing ground for children to test out some of those more sort of complex behaviours and um, scenarios that they might find socially. So they test it out in a game or an imaginative role play scenario first and then they work that out and then when the time comes when they're adults or a little bit older they have already experienced that without the sort of danger of experiencing that first time round without knowing what's happening. It also creates emotional connection. So when you engage the imagination, you engage the emotion and we want children to engage emotionally with that space so they learn to care about it, not just about that space in particular, but nature as a whole. So imaginative engagement is crucial for environmental stewardship. Children are spending more time indoors. They're spending more time in front of screens. Kids don't have those opportunities to, to play freely outside their house. Um, very few people now have back gardens, especially in Sydney. Kids are overscheduled. They get very little free time to play outside. I mean, some statistics state about two hours a week. So this is the Ian Potter Children's Wild Play Garden. It's an excellent place to learn. And the good thing is the garden does the, the teaching for us. I don't have to be in there. My team doesn't have to be in there. The kids just learn because the landscape invites it. So rather than the teacher standing up front going, I have all the knowledge and I'm going to tip this knowledge into my children, we work together and we build our knowledge together. So a place like this, which gives parents a bit of peace of mind um, and the kids feel comfortable in that space, then you know they can play freely and hopefully it mirrors those experiences that people like me had in the 60s, 70s and 80s of being able to just head off out the door when you finish school and when the street lights come on, mum calls you back in. There's a lot of research that says children that uh, have um, early experiences in nature um, tend to have better cognitive abilities, better physical abilities, better physical literacy, um, their imaginations are engaged, they're able to think more critically and also um, is the what we would call ecological understanding develops really early through play. So we don't have to teach kids about nature when they're older, it's already inside them because they've experienced it through you know, a holistic engagement of play. So governments are aware that this kind of play is important for kids, just as much as maybe physical activity from sport, um, because of its freedom and all of the cognitive and emotional stuff that comes with it. They definitely develop social skills. Um, a lot of the teachers that come along here with their kids will say to us, you know, we haven't had to deal with any conflict or any um, behavioural problems here. It's like, well, nature sort of sorts it out. You know, if two kids are fighting over sticks, there's another stick for them. I also feel that they build their resilience. So, you know, they might walk on un uneven ground and trip over, but then they dust themselves off, they keep going, and by the end of the day, they're running over the ground and then because they're having so much fun they don't want to stop and think about maybe the fact that their knees are dirty or they've got a scraped elbow or something so they definitely develop resilience. <laughs>